So I wake up this morning earlier than usual because school just started and I was trying to help get the kids ready for school. And what do I find? Twitter of time is exploding because apparently there are a bunch of official images of our cast members, first look images that were released through Entertainment Weekly, and they've been available for several days and no one noticed until now. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different. This is literally an on the fly reaction video and news video. This isn't going to be my typical deep dive unraveling the pattern video. I just wanted to quickly let people know what's going on, show these images, read the article, and then share some of my just kind of, you know, initial reactions and stuff. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit more kind of, I don't know, rough than usual, but please bear with me. There will be spoilers throughout this entire video. Uh, I'm going to be spoiling the images that have been shown and talking about plot lines in book one of The Wheel of Time, so keep that in mind. So, this morning I get on Twitter and I find all these images. The first image that I saw was the full cast image. From left to right, we've got Nynaeve, Matt, Lan, Moraine, Egwene, Perrin, and Rand. Now, I when I read the books, I don't normally pay that much attention to the costumes, but just really quickly looking at this, I like them. I know that these costumes are probably going to be a bit divisive, but I'm excited about it. I think it looks really cool. Nynaeve's got those stout Two Rivers Wolens. Matt looks properly disheveled, like he just woke up wearing his coat. Moraine and Lan look awesome. It does look like Moraine's wearing a riding dress of some sort, divided for riding, but it's a little bit hard to tell with her coat. Everyone here, by the way, is wearing their coats, so it's a little bit hard to tell what their actual main clothing look like, but, you know, I'm on board. It all looks great. This is the first time where we see two heron marked swords, or what we assume are heron marked swords. Rand's is a bit hard to see, but Lan's uh, is there. Very cool. I love it. Egwene's skirt looks really cool. It's different than I imagined. It looks a little bit Celtic or something, like, like almost like a kilt but I'd like it. I dig it a lot. Her coat is really cool. I like the idea that she probably has two rivers woolens, but she's trying to be cool and different, maybe follow Moraine a little bit. And so she's changed up how she wears her coat a little bit or not. Maybe that's just how her coat looks. I love that Nynaeve's braid is a gigantic braid and Egwene's braid is a little bit simpler, a little bit newer. Perrin looks massive. Everyone was so concerned that Perrin was uh, not big enough to be a blacksmith. Look at that guy. He's huge. And we know that the actor for Perrin is taller than the actor for Rand. Let's get over that. It's okay. The height of the character is not as important as them bringing the character to life. And Rand, or Yosha Stradowski, is still plenty tall, so it looks great. I love Rand's coat. It looks like something a shepherd would wear, although kind of a little bit more fashionable, maybe. But I like how it kind of almost looks like skins and wool uh, from his sheep. Very cool. I all overall, I love it. I think it's great. I'm sure there's a lot more detail here that I'm not picking up on yet. I'll have to kind of tear through this a little bit more, but those are my initial reactions to this image. The next image I saw really surprised me, and that was an image of Shatter Logoth. How amazing is this? And at first I was like, who's Lan holding there? And for some dumb reason, I thought it was Egwene, but no, of course that's Moraine. And um, we've got Aldeeb and Mandarb. That actually excited me just as much as seeing Lan and Moraine. But Shatter Logoth, according to the article, this is a real set. That's very exciting. Okay, moving on. We've got a close-up image of Egwene and Rand just kind of talking. And I love this. This is a moment that I was hoping to see in the show where they can have some sort of heart-to-heart. -heart. I want to feel like Rand and Egwene are promised to each other and they have feelings for each other because frankly in the books I don't really feel that very strongly. Rand is definitely worried about Egwene and Egwene is worried about Rand but I don't get the sense that they love each other that they have some sort of kind of like high school crush going on so I hope that they can explore that a little bit more. I also like that this is a scene of them sitting there talking not yelling at each other because there are a few scenes like that in the first book. This image kind of surprised me. This is an image of Loghain in a cage. What I love about this image is Loghain doesn't really look like he's caged. And what I mean by that is he still has that determination. He knows how powerful he is. I like the sort of fancy look of his uh, cloak or coat. I think that looks really cool. You can tell that he's had some success as the dragon and it really shows in this, but also he has been captured. The Aes Sedai in a weird way look less uh, composed than he does. And I, I really like that. I love Priyanka Bose as Alana, and it looks like we've got Claire Perkins as well as Kareen Nagashi. I think that's her name. Well, I assume those are two red sisters in the back. I am unsure if those are people who have been cast. Looks awesome. I think this looks really good. Now, these do look like promotional photos. They almost look a little bit, I don't know if touched up is the right word, but they do feel like promotional photos, not so much actual footage, but I'm sure these are scenes from the show that are probably just shot with a photographic camera. 
Let's see, what else do we have? I think that was it for the main images. However, we also got this interesting timeline where they talk about the different lengths of the different books. I like to think maybe this was inspired by my first video where I showed the different lengths of different stories and just showed the massive scope of the Wheel of Time in comparison to these other works that people know about. I don't love the idea that these articles are always trying to compare everything to Game of Thrones, but that's what they got to do, especially in Entertainment Weekly. That's literally their job. For those who may not be aware, Entertainment Weekly is basically this. Uh, it's an entertainment magazine in the United States that clearly is not as popular as it used to be. The fact that this has been out for a while and no one really knew about it until now says that Wheel of Time fans probably were not reading Entertainment Weekly, but obviously once we uh, latched onto this, everyone's been sharing it. It's been spreading like wildfire. Thanks to Rob from Weekly Wheel News for figuring out a way to get these images and this higher resolution, these digital versions of the image. Now, really quick, I'm just going to read the article as best I can. I just have these different screenshots, so I'm going to try to read the article here. It's been two years since Game of Thrones went off the air, and even longer since Amazon chief Jeff Bezos directed his prime video team to deliver him a hit akin to the HBO supernova. Into this vacuum steps The Wheel of Time, a new drama coming November, adapted from author Robert Jordan's best-selling series of the same name. Spanning a whopping 15 novels, The Wheel of Time, which debuted in 1990, seemed impossible to adapt before shows like Thrones. But while George R. R. Martin's epic beat Jordan's opus to televisions, showrunner Rafe Judkins believes Watt serves as a perfect bridge between Thrones and the earlier mythic saga The Lord of the Rings, another literary world getting a show at Amazon. Wheel of Time is the first fantasy series that really dove into the political and cultural worlds of all these different characters. Judkins, a former Survivor contestant and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. producer says of the insanely popular and lengthy books. It was also one of the first to dive into multiple POV characters, so you're following an ensemble with each of them having their own agendas and approaches to everything. That's always felt to me like the missing piece of the fantasy literature landscape that hasn't been brought to TV or film yet. The Wheel of Time also differentiates itself from those other big name franchises in the way it highlights its female characters. While Middle-earth's most prominent heroine has to disguise herself as a man, and Westeros' few female conquerors are often facing threats of sexual violence, the world of Watt is essentially matriarchal. The largest kingdom in the novel's unnamed land is ruled by a queen who will pass her crown to her daughter rather than her son, and uneasy peace is maintained by the female-only mystic order known as the Aes Sedai. These are not just a bunch of princesses swanning around in pretty dresses, says series costume designer Isis Musendin. These are women doing jobs. They're taking care of the governance. They're taking care of healing. The Wheel of Time's most prominent Aes Sedai is Moraine, Rosamund Pike, who rescues a handful of young villagers after monsters attack their community of two rivers. Though the group of new refugees doesn't trust her, Moraine is the guide figure in this world, explains Pike the mysterious stranger who comes to town and changes their lives forever. They leave with her on a journey that will either save or destroy humanity. As a member of the Aes Sedai, Moraine is a master at channeling a magic force called the One Power. Lifetimes earlier, both men and women were able to access the magic, but an evil known as the Dark One tainted the male half. Now, any man capable of mysticism is hunted by the Aes Sedai and stripped of his abilities, a process that can turn fatal. If, hypothetically, one of our male characters were able to use the One Power, they understand the stakes of it, says Judkins, offering a scenario that's a bit more than a hypothetical. If Watts sticks to the plot of Jordan's books, Moraine encourages her new female travel companions, Egwene, Madeline Madden, and Nynaeve, Zoe Robbins, to embrace their mystic potential. But she also suspects that one of their male cohorts may unknowingly possess quote, the spark, and be linked to the long-lost messiah known as the dragon. She's just not sure if it's Rand, Yosha Stradowski, Matt, Barney Harris, or Perrin, Marcus Rutherford. While shooting in Eastern Europe over the past two years, pausing for significant hiatus due to COVID-19, Judkins and his team felt the pressure to get Jordan's story right, and spared no expense crafting a world they hope is embraced by the millions of rabid Watt fans. We literally built Shatter Logoth from scratch just for 15 minutes of airtime because it's that important to the series. Judkins says of the infamous abandoned city, which is haunted by such dark energy that even the monstrous Trollocs hunting our protagonists fear to tread there. That's where it becomes very clear it's not just the forces of good and evil, there are lots of different angles. 
Judkins hopes to explore all those angles as his drama expands beyond Jordan's first Watt book. It helps that Amazon has already commissioned a second season, and that an unrelated Watt prequel movie in the works is sure to boost name recognition. But Judkins knows he must bring in more than the existing diehard fanbase for any chance of his series lasting long enough to cover Jordan's epilogue. To accomplish that goal, he's relying on the author's celebrated world building. I try to stick to the spine and the heart of the books, and bring that to the screen. Judkin says of his philosophy as showrunner. If I can successfully do that, the story and the characters will sell themselves. Okay, that was my first time reading that article, minus some of the mistakes and having to reread some parts because I can't read perfectly when it's my first time. But I think the thing that stood out to me the most is the fact that they built an entire set for Shadow Logoth and they claim we're only gonna see 15 minutes of it on air, which frankly, that concerns me a little bit. I was hoping for at least a half hour of Shadow Logoth, but I hope within those 15 minutes they can make it as scary as we hope that it will be. And maybe he's talking about just the out tier, like the exteriors that are seen in this image. Maybe this is the 15 minutes that we're talking about. Uh, maybe it's not necessarily all the interior stuff where we possibly see Matt with the dagger or maybe we meet Mordith or we see other things happening with Trollocs in the streets. I don't know. Anyway, that, that thing concerns me a little bit. I didn't really want to make this into an opinion thing. I just wanted to say this is Looking really cool. I know that there's going to be some divisive stuff. I wanted people to know about this. Please check out the images, read the article. Let's share this like crazy. We want people to see this kind of thing because we want people to tune into the show when the time comes. It does feel to me like the article was written in a sort of careful way to try to explain the story in a simple way to people who are not familiar without getting too overly complex about the metaphysics and other details. The way they talk about like, um, the the mystical art or whatever they the, the way they call uh yeah mystic potential i think that's a little odd but you know they're trying to uh, appeal to a wider audience i totally get that again rafe judkins is trying to stick to the heart and soul or the heart and spine of the books and the characters and if the if the story changes a little bit if some of the things that we love in the books aren't there but we stay true to the characters i think it's going to resonate with people and hopefully we get all those seasons that we're hoping to get so i hope this was an interesting video for some of you probably for some of you this will be the first time that you're seeing this please remember to like the video subscribe and if you disagree with anything or have things to say please share in the comments just be kind we're not gonna accept over overtly racist comments or things of that nature related to the cast members themselves. They've been cast. It's done. We don't need to be super upset because they're not exactly as tall as they're supposed to be or look exactly as your headcanon expected. But let's have an interesting conversation. I honestly don't know how I feel about the costumes. Costumes aren't something that I've really paid that much attention to. Even though Robert Jordan explained in great detail all the clothing, that's not something that I normally pay attention to. So, you know, this is all cool to me. I like it. I don't know that all the costumes feel like they come from the same region. That's something that we can discuss. I'm sure people who are more familiar with uh, this kind of stuff can sh share some details that I'm not aware of, but I thought I'd try something new. I wanted to get a first video out here and just give my initial reactions and show you guys um, some of the images. So thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. I have two big Watt 101 videos coming soon, but I'll probably be releasing them close to each other because they're part of like a set, Sidar and Sidine. And then I'm going to be working on my Battle of Falm video for Nablus. That's my next big battle breakdown video. So look for that. Thank you all. Love you guys. Talk to you later.